Hi, Year 11. This is Miss Axman, and I'm just going to talk to you briefly today about the character of Mr. Ederson from Stevenson's novella, Jekyll and Hyde. So Mr. Ederson, I think, is one of the most interesting characters throughout the entire text. Stevenson uses him as a third-person narrative to reveal the events through the novel and follow the journey of Dr. Jekyll's experiences. Stevenson presents events through Ederson's narrative from chapters 1 to 8 and uses documents to explain the rest of the story throughout the remaining two chapters. Uh, because the reader follows the narrative through Utterson's limited perspective, uh, remember that he does not know all of the information, Stevenson is able to withhold a true explanation uh, until Jekyll's letter reveals all in the final chapter. This leads the reader on a bit of an adventure and builds suspense through all the misunderstandings Utterson creates for the reader. Now what's quite interesting is how this builds into elements of the mystery genre. One technique used in mystery genres is called a red herring, and these are techniques authors use to purposely mislead or misdirect the audience. For example, in a murder novel, the murder weapon isn't ever going to be the bloody knife we originally expected it to be. Mr. Utterson is a red herring who constantly misleads the reader. Since the narrative is told through his perspective, when he comes to the wrong conclusion, so does the reader. And this happens many times throughout the novella, such as when he believes Jekyll is being blackmailed by Hyde, or when he thinks Hyde has murdered Jekyll in the cabinet itself. So I'm just going to walk you through three key quotes that really highlight uh, some key aspects of Utterson's character. So number one, at the start of the novel, the reader receives a really unusual description of Utterson, and it reads that he was inclined to help rather than to reprove. I incline to Cain's heresy, he used to say quaintly. I let my brother go to the devil in his own way. So Stevenson uses a biblical reference which shows how Utterson is a non-judgmental character who is willing to support men rather than judge or criticize them. And this is something that would be really beneficial in his profession as a lawyer. A second quote to reveal Utterson's character is when his obsession with Hyde's character begins to grow out of control. Um, Utterson boldly exclaims, if he shall be Mr. Hyde, then I shall be Mr. Seek. So this pun on Hyde's name serves to highlight Utterson's growing need to discover who Hyde is, to the point where Utterson decides to haunt the door near Jekyll's house just to catch a glimpse of the unknown figure. The effect of this quote um, is really twofold. Number one, it serves to show Mr. Utterson's loyalty and the protective nature he has for his friend, Mr. Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll, sorry. It also continues to build the pattern Hyde has on people as he makes them act unnatural. So Utterson, the very logical lawyer, is now becoming very fanatical and fixated on this one figure. Finally, a third quote um, that really demonstrates the role of Utterson and how he's used in this novel is at the end of his own narrative when the, him and Poole break through the cabinet in Jekyll's house and find Hyde's body on the floor. Utterson exclaims, Hyde is gone to his account and it only remains for us to find the body of your master. Again, Utterson makes an incorrect assumption. He believes that Hyde has murdered Jekyll and we, the reader, are following Utterson and, and are misled by this red herring. He's jumped to the wrong idea, and therefore so have we, the audience. It's really only in Jekyll's final letter in Chapter 10 that the mystery is solved. And that year 11 leads to our brief overview of Utterson in Jekyll and Hyde. Thanks for listening.